What follows is a group of videos that I made in 1976 and 77. The originals were made with a Super 8 synchronized sound movie camera. I had the movies transferred to digital video. Here you see an elderly artist named Raugo Sarwadogo carving an antelope mask in the village of Kirsi in the spring of 1977. You can see that here he's blocking out the rough shape and removing the bark. These people are speaking more, the language of the Mosi people. Now you can see the rough form of an antelope. The horns are to the left and the snout is to the right. He is just about to separate the excess material from between the two horns. Now he uses a smaller adze to begin to dig the excess material out from inside the helmet of the mask.
par exemple, oui. la, la fille qui vient avec euh, la mouchoir devant la Late in 1976, I visited Yamba Wedraugo, a carver in the village of Kualtangan, about 20 kilometers to the west of Yako. Yamba was famous for carving the crests that Mosi performers wear on top of their head and which are called Zazaido. The singular is Zazaigo. These are objects that artists in Queltangan have been making for over a century. Um, Leo Frobenius, the great German explorer and adventurer, purchased some in Queltangan and gave them to the museum in Berlin. Here you see Yambo Wedraogo's son painting the Zazaido crest that his father has made. In this part of the video, the base of the crest is facing towards the upper left, and the horns are um, uh, here, they are towards us and toward the three objects that he has already carved. Here you can see one head on the left and another on the right. His hand is on what will become the base of the crest. His son is painting the crests using two pigments, hematite red and a white made from the excrement left behind by tiny lizards that burrow in the ground. The black color is burned into the surface of the wood with a hot iron. Yambo Wedrago has kept this crest buried for some time in damp earth to allow it to dry out slowly. He then digs it up and finishes the carving before he turns it over to his son to paint. In 1976 and 1977, when I knew him, Yili Wango was a young man, uh, a carver who worked up in the hills uh, north of Yako uh, in a village named Bubalu. Nora and I went out into the wilderness several times with Yili Wango to watch as he carved masks. Here you can see him blocking out the basic shape. His left hand is on the upper crest that will form the feathers while he carves at the face and cheeks of the mask.
Like all of the carvers in Burkina Faso, Yili Wango has a basic sort of recipe for carving, so that depending on the type of object he intends to carve, he sets, he blocks out the basic geometric shapes. Here you can see he has carved with the grain to free large masses of the wood from what will become the crest of the mask. He then cuts those across the grain using a small adze to free them from the carving. Like every other artist in Burkina Faso, Yili Wango pauses frequently to look at the mask and make sure that his work is symmetrical and that the proportions are right. Here he is carving out the inside of the mask to open up the section that will go over the performer's forehead or the top of his head. Here he's using a particularly small adze for the detail work. A week later, Nora and I returned to Bubalu to watch Yili Wango finish the mask by burning the holes for the costume using hot irons and by pyro engraving the black details along the crest and the scarification patterns for the mask. <laughs> As you can tell from the video, Yili Wango is wearing a wool balaclava over his head and face because it is so cold. Overnight the temperature had dropped to about 85 degrees. He has a whole series of iron pokers with wooden handles set in the fire to heat up the iron portion. He then uses those to pyro engrave patterns on the surface of the mask.
now he is using the hot poker as a drill to create the openings through which the performer will be able to see. You know, put up an effort to you, sir. I'm going to let you know. I'm going to let you know. I'm now Yili Wango and two of his younger friends prepare the red and white pigments with which he will paint the mask. Yes, come on. They grind the red pigment using hematite or a red iron rich stone. The boys dig the white pigment out of the burrows created by small lizards. It is a pure white and can also be uh, replaced with classroom chalk. He is using the soft pith of a sorghum stalk as a brush to apply the pigments. Here he is talking about the different types of masks that he is able to carve, including the antelope mask, the beautiful woman mask, the hawk mask, the bird mask, and several others. He is, of course, speaking Moray, the language of the Bosi people. At one point in the carving, he took a break and got up and wandered through the bush with us following, looking for an acacia tree with sap that had seeped out of the branches. This is the material that's called gum arabic, and it forms a very good sealant or glue for the pigments. This video shows off the colors and patterns of the mask particularly well. Finally, some black pigment is used that he boils up from the seed pods of the acacia tree. Yeah, boom, 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 bo